So let me give you a short update on where we are and how RISC-5 is doing. And I would like to start by saying that RISC-5 is poised for a big 2025. This is a quote from VDC Research from just a month ago. Uh, their message is that risc 5 success has extended beyond embedded computing to storage, HPC, demonstrating the architecture's broad momentum. I would add AI, IoT, automotive, and space to the list. You're familiar with this chart, most of you. This was presented by our previous CEO by Calista last year. It's still very much up to date. Um, this is a preview of the report from the SHD group, and they predict that by 2031, RISC 5 will ship 20 billion socks with multiple RISC 5 cores in it. And the same analysts um, preview that RISC 5 will be up to 39% in market share in all the top markets. And we see this important shift that. Thanks to RISC-5, thanks to the flexible architectures, thanks to the way you can design your chips fast and in, with innovation, we are moving from a traditional SOC design to workload design silicon. You focus on your workload and you design the architecture at best. And this is enabled by, by RISC-5. So I would like to spend the next few minutes together to focus on two areas and give you updates on the industry verticals, and on our initiatives on the developer experience. So let's start from the verticals and from the industries. Uh, automotive. Every month we have news from our members, uh, Infineon, Cartus, MIPS, Andes, everyone, we have continuous new updates. Uh, just a couple of months ago, before Embedded World, Infineon provided updates to their uh, automotive microcontroller roadmap, and it will all be based on RISC-5. Uh, Cartus announced their uh, uh, out of order platform for automotive up to 4 gigahertz. And MIPS announced their platform for ADAS and autonomous drive, and it's got um, I ISO 26262 ACLD certification. So, it, there are news every day about new achievements in automotive. And inside RISC-5, we launched the Automotive SIG. Uh, it's a focus group where all you members have a place to review and analyze the requirements from the automotive space and map them to all the extensions from RISC-5. And uh, the goal is to come up with uh, application notes and white papers that describe best practices and the best way to use the RISC-5 extensions for an ECU or for a zonal controller or for a central compute unit. In the data center, again, we have news uh, all the time. Uh, Revus and Canonical teaming up together. Uh, Schwann Tier from Alibaba with the latest server grade uh, chips. Uh, Fedora being live with RISC-5 support and Space Meet and Ventana. So every day, and inside RISC-5, we recently ratified the server SOC specification. And we're now working on the server platform. The value is that we are defining the common hardware peripherals around the RISC-5 core, and we are defining together and standardizing the hardware and software interfaces so that the operating system vendors can easily port their enterprise distribution service five. On AI, well, uh, we, we attended the keynotes by NVIDIA last year when at the RISC-5 summit, they estimated that they shipped a one billion core of RISC-5 core just, just at NVIDIA. And ahead computing raised more than $20 million of uh, their uh, first round of funding. And Accelera uh, uh, secured more than 60 million euros of uh, grants to develop AI chiplets and platforms. And Andes working with, with Meta on the latest AI accelerators. And Ubitium and Semidynamics all providing news and latest uh, product updates. And inside this five, we have the AI ML6, where we work bottom up to analyze the requirements of uh, AI ML processing and identify opportunities for acceleration through new opcodes. And top down, we work at the platform at the framework level to identify the best ways of integrating RISC-5 in all the ML frameworks. 
space. Um, I was at the RIS-5 in space workshop a month ago in Sweden, and the energy, the number of people, the number of projects based on RIS-5 was tremendous. Everyone on stage had a, had a project based on RIS-5. We had talks from uh, front grade, from the European Space Agency, and more. And uh, you see all our members, uh, front grade, sci-fi, microchip, all working with uh, the European Space Agency, with NASA, all working on RIS-5 projects. And uh, we had the first meeting yesterday with uh, companies involved in space, and there's a, a, a strong request from you members to have a, a place, a forum, to analyze the requirements from space and map them to RIS-5. Um, I would like to add one comment. Um, for me, SaaS has always meant software as a service. But last month I learned something new. In space, SaaS is not software as a service. SaaS means satellite as a service. And you can think of uh, getting a, a workload and a compute instance from a satellite. You can imagine the implications in terms of security and reliability. And this is where mapping to the RISC-5 security architecture um, fits the bill very, very nicely. Um, in all my slides, I'm highlighting talks uh, during the week. Uh, so you will see panels uh, on, from the ESA and panels from automotive leaders and panels on AI and panels on the data center. Uh, and I would like to mention also about HPC. You should attend the uh, talk by Alexandra from the EuroHPC and from Nick Brown from EPCC, where they will discuss HPC and RIS-5. And the latest news is the DARE project from the European Union. Um, the announcement was about 240 million euros of funds for HPC projects based on RIS-5. So let me cover membership. That's also uh, incredibly important for RIS-5 and for the industry. So I would like to welcome Peter Schiffer from Infineon. Peter is the president uh, and, C and uh, CEO for Automotive at Infineon. And please, Peter, join me on stage. Infineon recently upgraded and is our first premier member that we're announcing today. Thank you, Peter. Welcome. Thank you, Tell us about the, the values and the expectations from joining RIS-5 as a premier member. Yeah, sure. Very good morning. Yeah, Infineon is uh, the global leader when it comes to semiconductors for the automotive market, and we by far have the broadest portfolio from the sensors, microcontroller power, so everything. And as a leader in this market, we are strongly believing that the car of the future will be uh, fully electric, it will be uh, always online, it will be fully connected. And uh, semiconductors make more than 90% of all the innovation you see uh, in the automotive market. So, and as a, uh, a leader, we uh, also want to make sure that we place our roadmap and our next generation products on the right technology. And we have been convinced that for the next generation microcontroller, Risk V is the right core um, to decide for. Um, but we're also convinced that we need to standardize that. So standardization of Risk v for automotive is, is in our heart, and we are highly uh, convinced and committed to do so. And this was also the reason why we joined as a premium partner here, uh, because we cannot do that alone. But here in this room, we have all the needed partners, and only by collaborating together we can make that happen. So I invite you, together with us, really driving the... Uh, standardization of risk five in automotive. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Our next premier member today is Eswin. I would like to invite Dr. Hale on stage. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us about Eswin. Sure. Um, so actually, I'm going to give a presentation soon later. So I'm going to have a very short introduction about Yiswing and why I want to be the premium member. And Yiswing uh, was established in 2019. So although we are 
uh, a very young company, uh, but we do have very broad uh, product lines. Uh, our products spanning from like a low power MCU to uh, multimedia processing to uh, automotive and uh, to AI edge computing, etc. So to cover the requirement of such a broad um, product spectrum, we do need a very versatile technology which can enable us to innovate from the uh, bottom up. Uh, so obviously, RISC-V is the right choice. So ever since our establishment, uh, we uh, make RISC-V as our fundamental technology for all our products that uh, need a controller inside. So far, we have delivered uh, more than 50 uh, RISC-V products, and uh, many of them are the industry first launched. Um, and we do a lot of customizations according to the customer's requirement, uh, so to gain the best PPA. Uh, and uh, that is highly recognized by our customers. So we decided that we need not only to benefit from the risk file technology, but also to actively contribute to it. So we decided to be the premium member, and ho hopefully we could be deeply involved in the standardization process and uh, also uh, to the development of the ecosystem. So um, I hope uh, with everyone uh, sitting here, uh, we together can make the risk file a better and a great technology. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. He. Please join me in uh, welcoming all our new strategic members, Mobileye, SCI Semiconductor, Frastonic, Moore's Lab AI, iGalia, and Chipone. Welcome, everyone. And now let's switch to the developer experience. Uh, last year, last October, just a few months ago, we ratified the RVA23 profile. It's a set of mandatory extensions that set the bar high for high-performing application processes. It's really important for the developers. They have a common base of features in, uh, in RVA-compliant uh, SOCs that allow them to accelerate uh, software development and porting of modern operating systems. And even more, it ensures binary compatibility at the application level. We have also been enabling developers and uh, with the latest uh, hardware platforms. So just last year, we uh, shipped uh, almost 300 boards to the key developers in the uh, main uh, open source projects. And uh, we teamed up with uh, external academia and labs to make also boards available for remote access for the developers. And I always want to, to share with you that we have a, a very large, continuous growing catalog of online trainings about RISC 5 If you are new to RISC 5 if you are just getting started with RISC 5 we recommend that you go through these training courses. Uh, they are all free to, 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 to follow. Uh, they range from uh, designing FPGA with RISC 5 up to porting real-time operating systems and Linux and developing drivers. Uh, I took the uh, fundamentals and I got my foundational associate certification last year. And my favorite one is building a RISC 5 CPU core. If you're new to RISC 5, by following this course, you will appreciate the beauty and the simplicity of the architecture thanks to the specification. And I believe that not only hardware designers, but every software engineer shall take this course. It will be eye-opening, really. I would like to invite Barna Ibrahim, the Vice Chair of RISE, because RISC 5 without software doesn't do much. We need software, and that's why we're working very, very closely with RISE. Please, Barna, tell us about RISE. Thanks, Andrea. Um, RISE is industry-led collaboration supporting open source software for RISC V architecture. We're uh, really excited to collaborate with you as a developers to cross the stack from um, compilers to language runtimes all the way up to uh, application. We're working very closely uh, with RISC V International. There is a strong collaboration in a, a different working groups. Recently, we have formed AI uh, ML working group. We're looking at PyTorch and Llama.ccp, how to port uh, all of those to the RISC-V architecture. And as part of this uh, RISC-V International and the RISE collaboration, Andrea has an uh, exciting announcement that we're jointly announcing. Andrea? 
Risk Five and Rise together as one, we are upgrading web membership to the platinum level of the Yocto project. I would like to invite Josef Holzmeier, community manager from the Yocto project, to explain the value to Risk Five. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on stage, Andrea. Um, before explaining why it is so awesome that you're joining, let me share a little bit of personal experience. Um, I usually call myself a recovering embedded developer because I've been doing this for 15 plus years by now and the last 10 years of that within a Yocto project. And I followed RISC-V from its earliest announcements up to what awesome thing it is now. And over years, people have asked me time and again, hey, Joseph, when are we going to see full RISC-V support in the Yocto project? And after today, I can tell them, yes, you are going to see it real soon. And what will support actually mean? Support does not mean, hey, yeah, you can build Yocto for this because you have actually been able to do that already. We've had awesome community contributions around that. But there will be pre-built images that you can just like take and run and try Linux running on RISC-V for yourself, even without hardware, of course. And as a Platinum member, this will mean no, it's not just like building this is possible. No, building it and verifying that it actually works as intended, like full positive test coverage, will be actually a prerequisite for any upcoming Yocto project release. So you are on, on uh, technical verification on par with all the other major ISAs that are out there. Support does usually mean nine months for a standard release, but we do an, an LTS release every two years, which gets full maintenance and service for four years, which is an awesome platform to build your project and products upon. And building, this is also one of the very cool things that the Octo project can do, as it builds everything from source. It means, hey, you can just um, use that one fancy profile that is the latest and greatest these days, and you are limited in your optimizations. No, whatever your compiler can build, and by compiler, I usually mean CCC, but you can also insert other ones. If you have a compiler that can build it, then Yocto will actually be able to build this for whatever profile and optimization that you, that you want. And to make sure that this is not just like a one-off effort, RISC-V will get the same voting rights, as I said, like all other major semiconductor manufacturers, other ISAs that we already have on the board, so you can really make a huge impact on, on the ongoing sustainability of the Linux ecosystem on RISC-V. Thank you very much for joining us. Dave Patterson started the RISC revolution in the 80s. And in 2010, Dave Patterson, Krista, Andrew, Yunsuk started RISC V, the fifth generation of the RISC revolution. 18th of May 2010. This coming Sunday, May 18, 2025, RISC V will turn 15. Let's celebrate it together. There will be a special RISC V event celebrating the 15 years this afternoon. And uh, please ensure that you're all with us. Um, having said that, I want to wish you all a great three days. And uh, please, during these three days, think about the three qualities of RISC V that have been up in your mind and uh, share them with your peers. Enjoy the conference. Thank you. <laughs>